this and we'll learn about how we can use the InfluxDB 3.0 Go Client Library. This is part of the Client Library series and is brought to you by InfluxDB University. InfluxDB University offers free, live, and self-paced training on a variety of topics including InfluxDB v3, client libraries, data science tools like Tableau and Power BI, and so much more. Although not, of these, not all of these courses have been published yet, so I really appreciate your patience. But today we'll be focus on, focusing on the InfluxDB v3 Go client library. We'll talk about the requirements that you need, what it is, how to write data with it, how to query data with it, and additional resources and areas where you can go receive help. So let's dive in. What is the InfluxDB v3 Go client library? Well, the Go Client Library is a software package that provides a set of tools and functions for interacting with InfluxDB using the Go pro programming language. It allows developers to efficiently query and write time series data uh, to and from InfluxDB, which simplifies the integration of InfluxDB into your Go application. So the way that it works is that it wraps the Apache Arrow client in a convenient InfluxDB v3 interfaces, and this allows you to execute both SQL and InfluxQL queries, request server metadata, and retrieve the data from InfluxDB Cloud Dedicated or InfluxDB Cloud v3 using uh, the flight protocol with gRPC. So one advantage here is that Apache Arrow Flight Go client enables really high transport of large data sets over network interface. And the way that it does this is by utilizing the flight protocol and gRPC, which provides really efficient serialization and deserialization, as well as bidirectional streaming. So the fact that we wrap this client in our client makes it really easy to use and you get all the advantages of using the Apache Arrow client. So how does the Go client library work? Well, writes are implemented via the write API endpoint, and this is similar to a lot of previous versions of InfluxDB, so that's the same. And queries, like mentioned previously, are implemented via the Apache Arrow flight client. So now let's talk about the requirements. So you'll need an InfluxDB uh, v3 cloud account, and you'll need to create a database or a bucket, um, and also get that database name. And you'll also need to create an authentication token. So let's see how it is that we actually do that within the UI. So basically, if you navigate to this menu here on the left and click buckets, buckets are the same thing as databases. You can sit, say, create a bucket, which is also a database, give it a name, specify a retention policy, how long you want to keep that data for, and just hit create. Then we can go to the API tokens uh, page from that tab and generate an API token, name it as well, or give it a description and then copy that. So there we go. So now let's talk about installation. So basically you'll want to add the latest version of the client package to your project dependency in order to use it. And so here's the latest version. And then to write data, you'll want to import your packages and then instantiate or initialize the client and write and query InfluxDB v3 by providing that token in that database. So let's see an example. So here we are actually um, instantiating our client um, and importing our packages. Well, first we're just importing our packages. Here we go. Um, and we you know, get our URL, um, our InfluxDB URL, our token in our database, and we use environment variables to initialize the client. And then we create a new client with an InfluxDB server base URL and that authentication token that we just uh, got. And then to write data with the Go client, we'll use the client.write method. Um, and we can actually write line protocol data or line protocol format. Um, and then we'll write that to a specified database or bucket name. So what is line protocol? For those of you who are new to InfluxDB, line protocol is the ingest format for InfluxDB. It consists of the following attributes, a measurement, tags, fields, and timestamps. Measurements can be thought of as a table in SQL, and tags and fields and the timestamp columns can all be thought of as columns. Um, they all like get created or turn into columns um, after you write. Uh, however, um, users do like to differentiate between tags and fields, uh, and the way that we do, or the way that we recommend that you do, is think of tags as being used to store metadata to your instance, and fields are used to contain the actual time series values. So, for example, if I was monitoring the temperature in various rooms in my house, my field might be temperature, and my tags might be 
room with tag values of kitchen, bedroom, living room, etc. Um, however, it's important to notice or note that both fields and tags, like I said, do convert to columns in a table or in a measurement in InfluxDB. So in practice, uh, they're identical, but really this distinction is just solely for organizational purposes for the user when they're writing this line protocol or creating this line protocol data. But really you could do whatever you wanted. Um, I just find it helpful to think of it in that way. And data is also written synchronously with this method. So here's an example. So now that we actually can provide some, some clarity on what line protocol looks like. This line here that we're creating is line protocol. So we have this measurement or table name called stat. And then we have a, a tag called unit. And the unit is temperature. And then we have two fields, an average temperature and a max temperature. Um, and basically, you common separate your um, measurement or table name with your tags and then uh, comma separate your tags and then there's a space and then comma separated your fields. And then we can write this point directly to InfluxDB by specifying um, what database we want to write it to and using that write method. However, we can also write points. So if you don't want to worry about constructing line protocol, you can use a write points method instead um, and you can use the new point method to actually create a point. Um, so we don't have to remember what is comma separated, et cetera, et cetera. So here's an example of that. Instead, basically, um, we're going to use that new point method to generate a uh, new point, and we can include strings and also our field values and also any timestamps we want, and then we can just pass that point instead of line protocol into the right points method instead. And it's also important to notice that you can append these points to an array and write an array of points as well. Now, an important note about writes uh, is has to do with upserts. So you can upsert a field, but not a tag. So this is the only instance where there is some difference between them. For example, if you add a second point, um, and let's say we're going to just add two to our field values, then we would upsert those field values, and your previous values will be overwritten with the new field values. So let's look at our first line protocol line. We have an average, temper of average temperature of 23.5 and a max temperature of 45.0. In our second line, we have an average temperature of 23.52, so we just added an extra two, and a max value of uh, 45.2 arbitrarily. But everything else about these lines are the same. The table or measurement stat, the tag pair uh, unit equals temperature and the timestamp are exactly the same. So in this case, we're just upserting and overwriting the previous point. However, if we add a second point and instead we append this arbitrary two to the tag value instead of the field, then we're not going to upsert those values. We're going to simply add more tag values. So in this case here, uh, the only thing we're changing is unit equals temperature to unit equals temperature two, and we would just add a second um, tag, uh, second column, not actually upsert that, that value. So now let's talk about querying data with the Go client library. All right. So let's talk about querying specifically with SQL. So in this instance, we will generate a SQL query to query InfluxDB. If we are querying the data that we've been writing, we'll say select star from stat, uh, where time is now minus an interval of five minutes, so from the last five minutes. And um, we'll also specify uh, what tag or what column we want to also get grabbed from, what unit. So we say unit and temperature. And uh, if you're not familiar with this implementation of SQL, this is the only thing that's kind of weird about it, is when you do say, when you do specify time intervals, you have to explicitly say that with, you know, now minus interval of five minutes. And that's just the only thing that's like a little bit different. And then we can iterate uh, over that result after we query for um, our result and print our max value and our average value. So here are some of the, the query method parameters. Um, the only ones to really pay attention to are the database and the query. So the database is the database that you actually want to query from, and the query is the SQL query that you're going to execute. So now let's talk about how we can um, explicitly query for SQL because this is also how uh, we can query with InfluxQL and change that query parameter. So instead, we will um, use these, this query options method 
where um, we will construct query options. And one parameter there is query type, and we'll select influxdb SQL, and that allows us to query with SQL. Um, in the previous method, the query method, this was just wrapped up and so it's essentially a wrapper for this specific option. Um, and so if we want to, we can use the query with options method and actually pass in our options as well as our query and say explicitly we want to query with Flight SQL, which also provides the opportunity to query with InfluxQL. So um, then we iterate through our, our results like we did before and print our values. Um, and so for contrast, here's how we would query with InfluxQL. InfluxQL is a SQL-like query language that's specific to InfluxDB, and early users of InfluxDB are probably already familiar with it. Um, and the real difference is that it just has um, some functions that are specific for working with time series data and InfluxDB. So in this example, instead of using the InfluxDB 3 flight SQL, we'll use InfluxQL instead as our query type and pass those options in. And then our InfluxQL query here is just show measurements or show tables. And so we would be able to print uh, all of our tables, which would be stat. And so uh, the query with options method has these parameters, the database, the options, uh, also the, and these query options here can either be flight SQL or InfluxQL. Um, and to see full code examples, I recommend going to the URL below. Uh, if you go to the Influx Community Organization, that organization contains a wide variety of repos that contain all sorts of examples for how to use InfluxDB with a lot of other technologies, but it's also where we maintain all of our client libraries for InfluxDB v3. So I recommend going there, and you can check out the InfluxDB3 um, hyphen go repo, and then uh, you can look at the examples and look at the main.go example there for how to write different types of record types and query with SQL. And now finally, I want to share some additional resources and places where you can get help. So the first I already kind of mentioned, um, you can go to uh, the InfluxDB v3 Go client library, and it should actually be, this URL is wrong, it should be InfluxDB 3 go not Python. Um, and then also there's the Go client library documentation. Um, and again, it should be slash Go, not Python. So it, pardon me for that mistake. Um, but yeah, basically, if you go to docs.influxdata.com, fantastic resource to learn about all the client libraries. And you can just simply search for it as well, which is probably the easiest way to do that. And last but not least, I really want to encourage you to join our community Slack at influxdata.com slash Slack and participate in any conversations around Go Client Library or any other client library or InfluxDB v3. So here are some additional places where you can get help as well. We also have community forums, if you prefer that, at community.influxdata.com. Um, we have our Influx community uh, GitHub organization where you can find a collection of examples and demos for using and building solutions with InfluxDB in a variety of languages. We have our docs, docs.influxdata.com, and also our blogs, influxdata.com slash blog, where you can find examples for how to use the client libraries and a variety of other tools. And last but not least, I um, recommend for you to get started yourself. You can follow the following, follow the fo follow the following URL um, to get started with InfluxDB. Thank you so much. And now we're ready to uh, go over a quick demo of how to use the client library. I have a Docker file um, where I am pulling the latest Golang base image and also the required package. And then in my main.go file, I um, have basically some examples of how to use uh, the client library. So first I import um, my environment variables to initialize the client. Um, then I can actually create a new client and initialize it. Here's an example of writing that line protocol method with the right uh, method. And we pass in that line there. And then here we can query the point that we just wrote with uh, SQL. And we can iterate through the values to print the average uh max value and min value. Um, but also, here's an example of how we can query with InfluxQL or query by um, explicitly stating that we want to query with SQL. So what you can do is construct some query options. 
and then pass in the query type here. And um, then you can use the query with options method instead and pass in those options. Um, and so there's an example of querying with SQL explicitly. Here's an example of querying with InfluxQL explicitly. So in this case, our InfluxQL queries just show measurements. And when we create our options, we're going to pass in InfluxQL instead of SQL. Um, and then at the very end, we will close our client. So I've already built the uh, image. So now we can go ahead and run it just one more time to make sure that it's working as we expect. And yes, we wrote uh, those two points. And since all the rest of our code was commented out except for this, and we only wrote uh, these two field values, that's why we're only seeing those two field, field values returned to us. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please feel free to uh, share any other video requests that you might have in the comments.